still has no real, practical military option on North Korea, analysts say. After Pyongyang tested a nuclear weapon Sunday, U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis said the U.S. has many military options on North Korea and threatened Pyongyang with a massive military response if a U.S. territory or U.S. allies are targeted. But any U.S. military action puts millions of civilians in the South Korean capital of Seoul at risk, analysts say, and is therefore very unlikely to happen. We always have military options, but they're very ugly, said Mark Hurtling, a retired U.S. Army general and CNN military analyst. Weapons pointed at Seoul. For years, the problem with any U.S. military action against North Korea's nuclear program has been the massive conventional artillery Pyongyang keeps in range of Seoul, a metropolitan area of 25 million people. Experts say North Korea could kill tens of thousands of those civilians, if not exponentially more, using that artillery in retaliation for a U.S. strike on the North. Pyongyang's test Sunday of what is thought to be its most powerful nuclear weapon doesn't change that fact, experts say. But some also say the test doesn't mean North Korea is any more of an immediate threat to the U.S. or its allies. Hurtling said that means the U.S. doesn't need to do anything drastic to counter the current North Korean threat. Does North Korea threaten the existence of the United States or any of our allies right now? No, they don't, he said. Technological challenges. While North Korea did explode a nuclear weapon underground, and it has this summer tested what experts believe are ballistic missiles capable of reaching the U.S. mainland, it hasn't shown it can put the two together in a system that works. A successful test means they can build a weapon, not that they have any ready for immediate use, said Carl Schuster, a former director of operations at the U.S. Pacific Command's Joint Intelligence Center. But others have cautioned that the Kim Jong-un regime must be taken at its word because no one can be certain they have a nuclear-tipped missile that works until they actually try to hit something with one. If you attack them after they have the nuclear weapons, it's not a preventive war. It's just a plain old nuclear war, Jeffrey Lewis, a non-proliferation expert at the Middlebury Institute of International Studies James Martin Center for Non-Proliferation Studies, said on a recent podcast. Bruce Bennett, a senior researcher at the RAND Corporation who specializes in North Korea, said letting Pyongyang develop a working nuclear-tipped missile leave the U.S. open to a kind of nuclear blackmail. North Korea might tell the United States to not send conventional forces to South Korea, threatening to detonate nuclear weapons on U.S. cities if the U.S. does send those forces, Bennett said. What would be needed for strike? Even if that's a possibility, analysts say the U.S. is in no position right now to wage the kind of military campaign that could bring battlefield success on the Korean Peninsula. It would need weeks, if not months, to get needed additional troops and equipment to the region. Those would include aircraft such as B-2 and B-52 bombers that would operate out of the U.S. Air Force Base on Guam, and F-22 stealth fighters would be part of any first strike, experts say. Additional warships and submarines equipped with Tomahawk missiles would be needed to suppress North Korean air defenses so the bombers could operate, they say. And then ground troops would be needed in far greater numbers that are now available to take control of sites inside North Korea where nuclear weapons might survive a first strike. No additional forces are present, Schuster said Monday. But the U.S. does have the forces such as the Thought and Aegis missile defense systems in place to protect South Korea and Japan from a North Korean first strike. Hurtling said. And that means there's still time to get diplomacy to work, he said. We're still controlling the clock here. It's within our ability to keep the initiative, he said. CNN's Josh Berlinger, Ben Westcott and Zachary Cohen contributed to this report. These sanctions will cut deep, and in doing so will give the North Korean leadership a taste of the deprivation they have chosen to inflict on the North Korean people. Sanctions in the wake of North Korea's alarming progress in its nuclear and missile programs. Kim Jong-un launching a second intercontinental ballistic missile just nine days ago. A missile potentially capable of reaching as far as the eastern U.S. It is now Secretary of State Rex Tillerson's mission as he travels across the region to ensure all parties, especially China, adhere to the sanctions in hopes North Korea finally comes around. Well, the uh, best signal that North Korea could give us that they're prepared to talk would be to stop these missile launches. Um, you know, we've not had uh, a, an extended period of time where they have not taken some type of provocative action uh, by launching uh, ballistic missiles.
And that will indeed be the big test. But whether the North Koreans stop the tests or not, the U.S. will give the sanctions time to bite before taking further action. But Secretary Tillerson said there is no time frame for that. Developing this morning, North Korea says there is no bigger mistake than the U.S. thinking it's safe across the ocean. National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster says President Trump has been briefed on military options regarding North Korea. It's an incredibly strong day for the United States. It's a strong day for the United Nations. It's a strong day for the international community that wanted to send a message to the North Korean regime that we were done. The, de the time of talking is over. We made that very clear on Monday and the time for action has happened and now it's time for North Korea to decide where they're going to go. Uh, what you saw the Security Council do was a unanimous uh, vote that basically banned coal, lead, lead ore, iron, iron ore, banned seafood, um, stopped all new joint ventures, stopped expansions of joint ventures, had multiple sanctions designations and we gave them basically a kick in the gut with a billion dollars of sanctions that are going to start they're going to start to feel right away it's, it's going to be very strong and it's time for north korea to realize we're not playing anymore north koreans lining up to watch state-owned tv threatening the u.s with a thousands fold revenge for what they call villainous u.n sanctions warning it's a mistake for americans to think they're safe president trump talking for an hour to his secretary of state at an asian summit today after rex tillerson delivered a message to north korea stop testing missiles then we can negotiate North Korea's shocking breakthrough in a test 10 days ago. A missile able to reach as far as Chicago has alarmed the world. That plus what U.S. officials call unusual and unprecedented submarine activity by North Korea, which hopes to develop sea-launched missiles as well, producing a diplomatic win for the White House, while in Washington talk of the potential need to plan for military options. There's nothing like the threat of a ballistic missile landing on your homeland. But you have to look at what North Korea has done. This is a country who has taken all of its revenues and not given it to its people to feed um, where they're starving, but instead has put it towards an irresponsible nuclear program where they're trying to show their muscles. So what we basically did was um, kick them in the stomach, told them to stop and said, we're not going to put up with it anymore. And the ball is now in North Korea's court. They have a big decision to make. They can either respond by pulling back and saying that they're not going to be a part of this reckless activity anymore. China said that sanctions would put a lid on the uh, nuclear capability of uh, North Korea. Uh, China was also confident that North Korea will come to the negotiating table. But you know what? North Korea has just reacted to the sanctions just moments ago for the first time, condemning the move, calling them a violation of sovereignty. It also a promise an action of justice. What action of justice really means, we don't know. We just know it's probably a retaliation now. They're believed to be capable, of course, of hitting the U.S. We don't know if they will do that. As you know, uh, the international community has been trying to get Pyongyang to negotiate, but that has been to no avail. Pyongyang has been resistant. According to the Seismological Society of America, most of what the world knows about North Korea's past nuclear tests comes directly from work by seismologists. These scientists study earthquakes and energy waves moving through the ground. Nuclear blasts create their own energy waves, and studying them helps pinpoint the location and size of explosions. On September the 10th, 1996, 
the UN General Assembly adopted the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. That banned nuclear explosions everywhere on Earth, the atmosphere, underwater, and underground. North Korea is the only country to perform nuclear tests in this millennium, and all have been underground. That makes seismologists essential. In the case of the last test of North Korea, over a hundred seismometers of our network detected the explosion and uh, seismologists very rapidly can determine the location. The Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization has more than 300 monitoring facilities around the world. When North Korea tested nukes in 2006, 2009 and 2013, the data was processed and distributed to their member states within two hours of a test. Or in other words, faster than North Korea could even go public with news of its own test. To clarify your thinking, the United States has to take prudent military planning into account. 